for your patience this evening. We're going to go ahead and get started. Apologize that we're a few minutes late. Uh, Mr. Cardenas is unable to join us, and uh, Mr. Garcia is en route. At this time, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order and ask the city clerk to please call the roll. Council Member Silva? Present. Council Member Jackson? Here. And Mayor Vegas Walker? Here. At this time, if you could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to be led by our um, Council Member Jackson and remain standing for the invocation. Please join me in saluting our flag. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you could please remain standing and bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together to do the work of thy citizens within the city of El Centro. Help us to be ever mindful of the blessings that we have to really live our lives with a spirit of gratitude. Please grant us a wisdom to do what's best and right in thy sight for our city. These things we pray in thy precious name. Amen. The City Council did meet in closed session this morning between 11.30 and approximately 1 p.m. We'll ask that our City Attorney please report out on our closed session. We have no reportable actions. Um, we provided an update on the Charter Communications litigation. We filed, as, as we said at the last special meeting, a motion to dismiss, and we will be briefing that in the next month and Charter has filed a response to the FCC complaint and the city and the group of cities it's joined with will be responding to that within the next five to seven days. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Martin. At this time, we'll move on with our public presentations and announcements. Our first is a proclamation for Veterans Appreciation Month. Who do we have here? Oh, fantastic, come forward. If you could please um, introduce yourself to the crowd. I'm Carlton Bradley. I work at the Employment Development Department, Veterans Division. And uh, on behalf of the Veterans Employment Committee of uh, the Imperial County, uh, I'd like to thank you all very much uh, for this honor and uh, for supporting our veterans. And also, I'd like to invite you all to our Veterans uh, uh, Luncheon, Veterans Appreciation Day Luncheon. It's going to be uh, on May 9th, this next Wednesday, yes. uh, from 11.30 to 1. So hope to see you there. Thank you very, very much. Very good. Man. Thank you. Okay, stay, stay right there because we're, I'm going to read the proclamation and then we're going to come down for a picture. Okay, okay very good. So this is a City of El Centro Proclamation Veterans Appreciation Month, May 2018. Whereas the people of Imperial Valley appreciate and admire the thousands of men and women who served in the armed forces to protect and preserve their country and the freedoms enjoyed by all Americans. And whereas in war, international conflicts and peacekeeping missions, men and women have been wounded, taken as prisoners and died in the line of duty. And whereas veterans possess a wide variety of val valuable qualities, including experience, maturity, leadership, and loyalty that make them ideal candidates for employment. And whereas the city of El Centro is committed to ensuring that veterans receive the services and programs to which they are entitled and to promoting employer interest in hiring veterans. And whereas during Veterans Appreciation Month, State and local agencies increase employer awareness about the benefits of hiring veterans. And now, therefore, I, Cheryl Villegas Walker, Mayor of the City of El Centro, State of California, do hereby proclaim May 2018 as Veterans Appreciation Month in the City of El Centro. Thank you, ma'am. Could you tilt it down a little bit? Is that better? No, no. That's good. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. It's a great honor, man. Thank you. Thank you, Grandmaster. Thank you. I'll actually be in here. They're dropping like flies. Where'd Jason go? Oh. <laughs> okay, next up is our um, El Centro Chamber of Commerce monthly report. Maybe we'll continue that for another couple of weeks. Sounds good to me. Next up will be a presentation by Imperial Valley Economic Development Corporation, IVEDC, uh, for contribution for fiscal year 2017-2018. Mr. Kelly, great to see you. You too, thank you. Mayor Walker, honorable council members, city manager, Piedra, Tim Kelly, Imperial Valley Economic Development Corporation, and it's an honor to be here today. I uh, passed out an annual report of IVDC and a list of some of the companies we've assisted this last year, um, a list of our executive committee, and um, we will be having our elections and nominations coming up in, in um, July, and Deborah McGarry, Vice President of Southern California Gas Company, our current vice chair, will be running for um, a chair of our board. I want to say that Steve Benson has done a great job representing our organization from the agriculture community. And um, a couple of the uh, companies I just want to focus on, Docs Organics is a company that uh, we've worked with for about two years. They're now fully operation. They're looking to expand already. We assist assisted them with several loan programs, CalCompetes, uh, incentives that have uh, made their company very profitable and are now getting ready to expand and so now we're continuing to work with them. But I think I wanted to bring up... I'm sorry, what yeah, was the name? Uh, Docs Organics. Docs Organics. Yeah. Got it. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, it has a regional significance for Imperial County. Uh, previously they were using companies in Yuma, Arizona and in Riverside County um, to process their goods. Now they're doing it here in the Imperial County and as I mentioned they're getting ready to expand. And I just wanted to bring up um, that because it goes along with the business services program that we started <coughs> several years ago. Our main role here in the Imperial County is to attract industry from outside the region into Imperial County. Um, but we have found that in many times that those companies need additional service and um, that's why we developed the business services program which has been very successful. And so we have trained staff that assist these companies making, for, making sure that we take uh, full ability for, for uh, the different programs are available for the state, federal government, even local, to assist these companies. And we also um, assist existing companies to expand. And on the um, back page, we have some of our regional updates of partners that we work with. Uh, first of all, with um, uh, Imperial Valley EDC, we just we received a the Southern Broadband Board a Broadband Consortium a grant, and that is uh, well underway. Uh, we're looking for um, projects in underserved and non-served communities. And if you want to know what an underserved, non-served community is, uh, you would think that it's maybe in the outlying areas in Imperial County. Well, it's not. Uh, we had some real challenges here in the city of El Centro in finding a new location and having adequate broadband. And so it's basically anywhere. Um, and you go from having good service to sometimes no service at all. And so we want to make sure we not only look at areas that are low-hanging fruit, such as Bombay Beach, an island. We did help Bombay Beach and um, Desert Shores, um, Salton City, Ocotillo with projects, but there is a big need here in the city of El Centro. Along with that is training and, and other programs related to that. Uh, one other one I just want to mention in cooperation with Imperial County Transportation Commission is our EPA program, and that has just been um, approved and launched. Uh, we will start the outreach within this month. We had a meeting today with ICTC. And even though Brawley is the main focus of this EPA grant, the intent was, and the support by all the cities in the Imperial County, was they'll create the opportunity to expand that city to city to city. And so we're already looking at the next phase 
and we hope that what we uh, are able to do in the city of Brawley, we can do in an identified area in El Centro, and most likely it'll be in your downtown area, uh, Broadway, um, State Street, and Main Street. And so we think that this is a great program that we'll be able to use region-wide. Uh, one of the other ones I want to bring to your attention is the um, uh, Imperial Regional Alliance is a nonprofit that we formed several years ago to allow us to apply for grants that otherwise would not be available to a C6. And one of our success stories of that has been the SBDC. And the cooperation between the organizations is very paramount. Uh, I, uh, SBDC was here several weeks ago and talked about their successes. We met all their goals for both the last year and the, and the six-month contract we have and are well on their way. But part of that is the um, referrals that, it, that the IVDC refers to the SBDC. And nothing, to, nothing bad to say about the previous SBDCs, but sometimes what might take a week or two weeks as a referral is being taken care of in a matter of minutes. So somebody may come in to see me and I say, you know, we can help you here. We can help you with our business services, but we can also help you with the SBDC. And so it's these additional services that we're able to provide immediately. And so we're, we're sharing uh, facilities with the SBDC and that's, that's really been helpful. As a matter of fact, with some of the other initiatives we have, we're all in one location. And so it really is a one-stop service, but we also work virtually uh, with other partners, such as the Kelly Baja Binational Mega Region. And um, we just actually hired somebody that's assisting us create the interaction in the, the um, uh, San Diego and Imperial County for the broadband uh, consortium. So with that being said, uh, we, our staff is doing great. We have a, a currently five staff. We have uh, just hired um, uh, a couple part-time. We have two full-time interns. We're looking for more interns all the time. And um, we're a little cramped right now. We are going to be looking for a new location uh, in the next six months. So we're actively looking now. We have three sites that we're considering um, here in El Centro. And so we're looking forward to that move. And um, we continually work with our partners and have tried to make sure that we collaborate, leverage our resources, and create a force multiplier within our region. Uh, Mr. Silva, I met with your staff today, and, and we really had a great discussion of how we can partner with some of the programs to take that to the next level. So that being said, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to address those at this time. Mr. Jackson. Um, just a couple of quick questions. Uh, your current location's in El Centro. You're looking for um, a larger office. Are the three locations that you're looking at, are they also in El Centro? Or? Yes, sir. Yeah, and we're, you know, we're, we're maxed out where we are, and one of the sites is pretty good, or we like it, but we think that with a couple of these initiatives, are each, each of them are going to have to hire additional staff. So we're afraid we're going to, have to, we're going to grow out of those uh, locations. We do operate as a regional organization. We provide services uh, throughout the county. Uh, I think some of these initiatives, such as the broadband and the SBDC, um, allow us actually to go into some other regions and help those communities without, um, you know, as I mentioned, leveraging the resources that we have, which has been very helpful. And sometimes, many times, we have to go out to the businesses to meet on location. Um, so now we have the resources to be able to do that. And I think when, with cooperations like organizations like ICTC that we're addressing many, many issues in the, in the um, outlined areas, underserved communities, transportation, broadband, education, and actually taking a lot of the services to those communities. So El Centro is a central location for us. It's very convenient for not only me, but our staff. Uh, I've a couple staff that live in Calexico, Heber, uh, El Centro, Brawley. And so this is kind of a central location for all of us. Thank you. Um, Mr. Garcia? Anything? Mr. <coughs> Thank you, Tim, for, for the report. You know, I think um, you know, I can always say that IDDC is always visible when it comes to uh, the recruitment of, of companies. And, and you've done a, 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 good, a really good job now for a number of years. Uh, and I'm really impressed uh, in looking at your report on the page where you identify your investors and the number of businesses that are, are deciding to <coughs> invest their money into uh, making IBEDC the, the viable organization that, that it is. And, and, and all the work that you've done. But I think I mentioned the last time we were talking about our contribution towards the IBDC that um, um, the many projects that I've seen you work on, uh, the one that kind of sealed the deal for me in terms of the value that you provide to Imperial County was Project Eagle. Mm -hmm. uh, although that project did not materialize as we wanted it. But I think the, the exercise of bringing together all of the different companies and coming up with a proposal that was determined to be viable and we were close 
to landing that project uh, said a lot to me because I know that if it wasn't for IBEDC and, and um, the organization and putting this together and bringing everybody together and scheduling the conference calls and the visits and all that, we would not have gotten as far as we did. Uh, and so that's just a testament to you and the organization and, and I know that you know, with that kind of coordination and effort, we are gonna land that big employer you know, soon. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that. And I'll just bring your attention that um, <coughs> in the report, it shows that we um, received and submitted 60 proposals last year. So it's almost a weekly basis we're, we're sending out a proposal. Uh, that project in particular was on a site here that's going to be annexed in the city of El Centro. There's already been a, an investment made by $150,000 by the owner. Uh, for that annexation, they've been working very close with the city to get that done. I think last Friday there was an environmental review on the project, and we're currently marketing that project already uh, to bring in aerospace manufacturing companies. Um, you know, we don't have a lot. We have manufacturing in our county, but not a lot of it. But we are on the the um, aerospace supply chain corridor for two of the largest areas in the, in the globe, and that's Los Angeles and Mexicali. So that product is going through here. Our job is to get them, get them to stop, right. and they need a location to stop. So we're working with the Department of Commerce. We're doing some logistics studies, and we hope that that will you know, take a project that maybe we weren't successful in, but the owner just realized how important his property was to this, um, this type of opportunity and decided to move forward with the annexation and preparing it for an industrial park here in the city of El Centro. Good. Thank you. Well, Mr. Kelly, I think uh, I have to echo my colleagues' compliments. I think you're doing a great job. I, I like the fact that you're focusing on uh, keeping your services countywide. I think it's very important that we have a countywide view for this type of service. It's not just one city. We all have to work together. But um, Project Eagle was a shining moment for you, and of course, uh, the, the program didn't go through, you know, no fault of your own. Of course, uh, things happened nationally that made that unfeasible. But frankly, that the work and the dedication, the time to bring that, and the fact that we still have that as a project that could go forward in another way, uh, but we still have the site identified and all of the due diligence that went into it, uh, that is uh, extremely impressive. And I'm very supportive, and I'm glad that the community is getting behind Ivy EDC as well as all the cities, and I'm a firm, firm supporter uh, for years of Ivy EDC, and I thank you for your work and for your dedication. And uh, without having this kind of an organization that's going to champion our area, uh, we're going to be in in dire straits in terms of economic development. So I think you're doing a great job. And Mr. Garcia, one one point on that is that. Uh, you remember, so first of all, that was a nationwide search. They narrowed it down to three states, and they narrowed it down to three sites. Uh, this, this was one of the sites. It was actually ranked number one for no fault of our own. Um, being ranked number one for, was for a lot of reasons. Um, couldn't have done it, first of all, without the city staff. They did a great job, as well as our other regional partners. Um, but uh, you'll remember that at the, last in the, last, at the conclusion, they brought in Ernst & Young that did an analysis. And Ernst and Young's comments were very positive. They were tough on us, as you remember, yes. but uh, they were very positive. And the result of that is Ernst and Young gained a lot of respect in our organization and, and um, appreciation for the community. And now we're working on two additional projects that were brought to us by Ernst and Young. And so that's kind of an example. Sometimes our best marketers are people that we've worked with. If we leave them with a good impression, then they're going to continue to work for us. They're trying to find sites. And we have a location that we think is very desirable. That's why I live here and work here. And we hope that we'll be successful soon. We are working on some very large projects, uh, three of which uh, are getting pretty close and will create um, uh, regional effects in the Imperial County. And we hope to be able to share with you those in the near future. As a matter of fact, if you do come to the Economic Summit and that will be, take place, and I, I, I think it's, we're having an Economic Summit and then the next uh, evening we will have, um, ICTC will have their- um, General Assembly. Uh, Excuse me? The General Assembly. General Assembly, and I think the speaker for that will talk about the importance Imperial County has to the logistics industry, uh, not only here between um, Imperial County and, and Baja California, but throughout the southwestern United States. So we hope everyone has that on calendar May 30th and 31st, okay? Mr. Kelly, excellent um, annual report. Really very much appreciate. Um, sorry about my phone continuing to go off. <clears throat> um, 
A um, couple things. Okay. Love the report. I noticed that um, Charter Communications is one of your gold level board of directors. Could they you talk good. to them about right. getting <laughs> CBS and NBC back for us? I, you, we have had those discussions. Chat with them sure. about that. Okay. And then um, I, I do go to your website mm -hmm. with uh, great regularity, and I'm just thinking that maybe a little more, unless maybe you've spent some dollars recently to, to upgrade, or maybe somebody that can maybe focus just a little bit more time to keep it up to date. Absolutely. That would be my I, only. I totally agree. I think it's uh, it's one of our, it's in our it's in our business plan, and I, <laughs> I totally agree with you. And okay. we'll, when I get back to the office tomorrow, I'll say, you know, guys, we need to update that website. People are looking at it. Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. We are. And, and part of that um, comes top of mind because uh, ECRMC just launched their new website. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think it would be uh, great if we'd have these two sure. stellar websites for our valley uh, side by side. Okay. Right. Well, you know, and that's and I just want to add something because yes. we had a meeting with um, um, Marcella several weeks ago about State Book, which is one of the investments we just made. And it's going to be a demographic um, a platform that we can all use, and we hope that the city will, will support us in investing in that. But it'll help us do comparative market analysis. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very familiar with EMSI and some of their demographic tools. Right. This one pulls 40 different um, data points, and we'll probably do a presentation at the Economic Summit, but it's going to be very helpful, and we have put a lot of emphasis on that, getting that updated, right. and so this will be our next phase. And you know that Southern California Association of Governments is moving into this whole yes. big data mm -hmm. arena. In fact, I think we have an all-day event tomorrow up in the desert. So what we're hoping okay. is one of the data points will be with SCAG. And so we've had that okay. dialogue with Arnold okay. San Miguel. Good. And we're looking at either um, SCAG would upload that to, uh, automatically or that we would, we would um, have assistance in getting all that information inputted. So it will become one of, our, one of our data points. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Appreciate the teamwork. Sure. Thank, Thank you, Thank you very Kelly. much. Okay, we are going to move on to our consent agenda. We are going to pull items 6, 7, and 9. Anything else? If not, then we'll need um, a motion to approve items 4, 5, and 8. So moved. Second. Can we do a voice vote, um, Ms. Caldwell, or do you want us to wait for a second? <laughs> If you can wait just a second. Okay. Okay, the voting has started. We have a motion by Mr. Jackson, a second by Mr. Garcia, and that item passes 4-0. Moving on to item number six, which is the adoption of a resolution. And I want <coughs> to say just at um, the beginning of this that this item will be carried over for final action in two weeks. We do want to have some preliminary discussion, and then the city um, council has some recommendations to make with regard to working with both our city attorney, city manager, and our HR director. But because you're here and we want to hear from you, we're going to go ahead and take public comments at this time with regard to item number six. Um, so Matthew, did you want to speak or Manuel? Yeah, Either of you want to speak? I, I could bring you up to date on what's happening today, and Manuel could just bring you up to date. Okay. So would you like to hear some preliminary comments first from staff, or do you want to make your preliminary comments? Uh, I'll just bring it. Okay. Very good. Well, good evening. My name is Matt Hartnett. I'm a, a water distribution operator with the city of El Centro. And the concern that we have is that... Uh, Sometime at the end of March, we there's nine of us in the underground department, and we've had ongoing issues for uh, going back two contracts, I believe. And uh, but basically, <coughs> we wanted out of the Teamsters. Right. So the nine of us petitioned. We had meetings with uh, Miss Pietra, and we formed our own bargaining unit, uh, which is uh, called the Certified Water Distribution Operator Bargaining Unit. We've elected officers, opening a bank account, just because uh, we felt we weren't getting adequate representation from the Teamsters. So we petitioned to get out, and then all of a sudden fire, and, or not fire, but parks, bi building maintenance, uh, and dispatchers. There was a total of 37 other Teamsters members also wanted out. 
So, so you guys kind of let kind of like we and... had the lifeboat launched and the whole ship jumped in, you know, okay. which is, you know, we love everybody, all due respect, but it's like we kind of wanted to get off on our own because we have like some issues that we feel the Teamsters never addressed. So, so today we had the meeting with Ms. Brownlee and uh, Ms. Pietra, and we've been put into the general employees bargaining unit. So now we're even in with more people as opposed to having our own bargaining unit and we we don't want that. We don't right. we don't feel we're gonna be adequately represented there either. Okay. And um, just to you know in the MOU if I could read that part, just what we're basing all this on is in Article two rights of the parties. Employees rights, employees of the city shall have the right to form, join, and participate in activities of employee organizations of their own choosing for the purpose of representation in all matters that directly affect and primarily involve wages, <coughs> hours, and other terms and conditions of employment that are not preempted by federal, state law, or city ordinances. Employees of this city shall also have the right to refuse to join or participate in the activities of employee organizations and shall have the right to represent themselves individually in their employment relations with the city. No employee shall be interfered with, intimidated, restrained, coerced, or discriminated against by the city or by any employee organization because of the exercise of these rights. And just wanted to state that and see if you guys would honor that but statement. Did, yeah, so did somebody make a notation of where he was re uh, referring within the MOU? Okay, yeah. I'm seeing Ms. Brownlee. Okay. okay, so we got that. Right, and that's okay. where that's we're true. at. So okay. we want to exercise that right, and have, right. we're all ready with our own unit, and that's where we're at. And that's what we're going to talk about in just one minute. So, okay. Matt, thank you very much. Cool. Manuel? Yeah. Oh, he summed it all up. I'm not sure if you need us up here. Or <laughs> so, we're so ditto what, what Matt exactly, said? Exactly, yeah. He okay. took it. He took it by the horns and okay. gave you the whole Fantastic. entirety of the case. So. Well, again, on behalf of, of my colleagues, we're really <laughs> glad to have you here. And we, we value your input, we value you as employees, and we wanna make sure that we're doing the right thing. And that's why we're gonna carry this item over for two weeks, and I want to turn now to the city attorney, and she's gonna explain what's gonna happen in those two weeks, so I hope you guys have some flexibility in your schedules, sure. because again, we're gonna ask that you meet with our HR director, city manager, and uh, city attorney. Um, Ms. Betsy, can you kind of lay out where we are in this process right now and why we are not moving forward with this item tonight? Um, we're not moving forward with the item so that we can address your concerns about the formation of your own recognized employee organization. To form that, you've taken the first step, but there's a second step, and the second step is for the employee organization to be formally acknowledged by the public agency as an employee organization. That has not occurred yet, and there's some things that happen um, pursuant to Myers Milius Brown and some other kinds of rules about how who's in the bargaining unit, what you do, and that kind of thing. So I think that what needs to occur now um, to get this on track is we can set out those requirements for you, begin to work with you toward that, and tell you what you need to do to finish it up to sort of seal the deal. Okay. Now, okay. I, I do want to be honest. Until that time, technically, you do remain in the general unit because you have to be in something. But it's acknowledged that you did, in fact, as far as I can tell, file what would be considered a timely petition to be recognized. Now it's on our end to do, take the steps to work with you to achieve that according to our rules. Okay. And, and I think you've also been told that we do, we have hired an outside um, <coughs> person to assist us with negotiations with all bargaining units this time around, this fiscal year. So we have an associate of, um, Betsy's. Mr. Uh, Manuel has his cell phone number. Yes. Okay. Mr. All right. Ritchie, yes. Mr. Ritchie. So right. he'll be part of this discussion. So we'll uh, see you guys back in two weeks. Okay. Okay. okay? All right. Thank very, you very good. Much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. We're going to move on to item number seven, which is the discussion and necessary action regarding the purchase of the residential <coughs> property for use by ECRMC. I'd like to acknowledge Kathy Kennerson from the hospital who's here with us this evening. Um, in the backup, we noticed, or you were part of the report, 
The hospital is moving forward with the purchase of, an, uh, of a home that is across the street just south of the campus, um, belonged to former Dr. and Mrs. Roach. Um, the idea is for that to become housing for physicians and ancillary staff who will be on, on site. And I guess what we're gonna be doing, Ms. Kennerson, is collapsing some of the leased properties that we have for staff right now and using that. So one of the things we need to do though, um, Ms. Betsy, with regard to this residential property is to ensure that title is held in the name of the city because the city, although the, the hospital has gone through the process to secure the property, um, title remains and rests with the city of El Centro. And we have done that. Ms. Kennerson has been able to confirm for us that this title will be held in the name of the city and she's worked with Chicago Title. We have in fact the in place the necessary insurance. She's confirmed that in general, the hospital campus is in the name of the city and she's identified those properties that are not and we will work toward transferring them. So that last little bit, I remember back here in the, my brain somewhere, Kathy and I several years ago had had a discussion that some of the properties that the hospital had purchased to the east of the campus were actually in the name of the hospital as opposed to the city. So we're gonna go ahead and take this opportunity to get that all um, cleaned up so that it'll come back to us at a future date, but not with regard to this property because we have everything ready to go. Um, Ms. Kennerson, when do we think the property would close and be available? Is there a, a timeline on that? Good evening, Mayor Walker and city council members. Um, Escrow's set to close a week from today. Okay, okay. And I do have a, a speaker slip from Salazar, I think is the last name. <clears throat> Would you like to come up? Yes, is it Alejandro? My name is Alejandro Salazar. I live awesome. on Poplar Drive. Thank yes. you for the opportunity of addressing the council. I'd like to draw your attention to this uh, hospital exp expansion project that's yes. been going on. I live on Poplar Drive. I am and have bared the brunt of all the construction. Actually, um, you know, sir, before, before we start this, um, yeah. I'd like to ask the city attorney if this falls within the scope of my home, because I live on Aurora. How far away do you think it is? I live on Aurora in Cypress. Two blocks. It's about two blocks away. I think it's at, well, it's outside the 500 feet. If you feel that this issue would have any impact on your property values, you should recuse yourself. I will if you recuse feel there's no connection, then no. I think it, I will recuse myself okay. at this time. Okay, Mr. Salazar, can you help me? I'm generally familiar with the pocket on okay. Poplar. The, um, I, the are you familiar with the three houses that used to be there that belong to the hospital. At, at the end of the cul-de-sac. They own five, they own three on the north side and two on the south side. The three on the north side have been demolished. This, the, okay. the hospital has been, from the very beginning, it, this is gonna take a little bit more than three minutes if you bear with me a little bit, okay. please, thank you. Um, from the very beginning, the, the hospital started having, what the, the beginning of their project, uh, the hospital started having um, kind of like little town hall meetings addressing their project and what was coming up and a lot of us started at attending. But from the very beginning, the hospital was less than truthful when it came to what was gonna be going on. And some of the concerns, a lot of the, a lot of the residents uh, voiced their concerns. Security, we've had a lot of break-ins, dust, um, just the regular noise, and one of our major concerns was a separating wall that the hospital said they were going to provide for us. So a, a wall, a brick wall that lined the alley, and they said they were going to do it. They said that they were going to uh, get plans, that they were having an engineer work on it. So everybody in the meeting, the residents, were great. You know, you guys are going to separate, keep your parking and your customers on your side and maintain the integrity of our neighborhood. It's a really nice neighborhood. I really like it. When they're gone, it's great. It's quiet. The kids can play outside. When they turn those three houses down at the end into offices, 
and the city allowed them to rezone. My bad for not taking, uh, uh, opposing that. Um, but it was a mess. The parking was a mess. We had all kinds of people walking around our neighborhood that we didn't know. They had, they put uh, trailers uh, behind those houses and they used them for staff training. And it was at just- our board, We had our board meetings there for a time. This was after the building was no longer habitable and had to come down. I, and I, right. I, I, I understand, but it's, an, it's a residential neighborhood and we have to live there. And they have been very bad neighbors. And it just, now I, I feel that by them destroying those three houses, and first of all, they didn't even, they didn't even care about our health. They didn't cover the houses. The houses were built in the 1960s. There was probably asbestos. There was definitely fiberglass in the in the in, in in insulation. Everybody got sick in my house. We thought it was allergies, and I'm talking right next door. I'm to gonna me. I'm gonna pause you just one second. Um, I'm gonna look to the planning staff. Are you guys gonna be able to comment on some of these issues or no? Yes. Okay. So we have our planning department here. That if you would continue, and then I am gonna look, Ms. Viacanya, for you to have some comments. Thank please. you very much. Um, so as the project progressed, first we were told, yes, you're getting a wall and we're going to increase security. And then, uh, we were told, well, you know, it's not going to happen. The wall is not going to happen because we didn't budget for it this year. So, uh, we asked for a special meeting with the CEO, Mr. Adolf. And he flat out said, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it because how are we going to go ask for investors and spend money putting up a brick wall just for you, pretty much? How are we going to explain spending money, I don't know how many thousands of dollars he said it was going to be, to build a brick wall to separate your property from whatever the hospital projects are. And now they are saying that the houses that were knocked down next door are gonna be a hospital parking, not for staff, but for their customers, their emergency room customers. And that they were not planning, that all they were planning to do is put a chain rope up, which is going to allow all their customers on their worst day of their lives They've got somebody in the emergency room walking in and out of our neighborhood. It's bad enough. It's, it's crime ridden as it is because of the three houses that they used to have there. I don't know how many times their houses have been broken into their offices. I help keep an eye on it because I call the cops. I know uh, one of their, one of their uh, uh, building guys, uh, Mark Obeso. I have a pretty good relationship with them, so I give them a call. Hey, there's somebody walking around the neighborhood in between the houses. So I try to be the best neighbor I can, and they're just not. And, and a lot of us have gotten together. We wrote a, a letter, and we addressed it to Adriana Nava in the planning department, and I believe they sent it to the city clerk. And uh, we're just upset that the hospital, and now Miss, uh, I forget her name, I'm sorry. She offered to buy her house. And she offered to buy the house at, at fair market value. First of all, we don't want to move. We've been there 18 years. 18 so, years. Kathy, the answer is no. Oh, oh well, it sounds like the answer no. is no. Okay. Can I, can I just tell you one, uh, just make one yes, recommendation. So while we own the hospital, the, the city of El Centro owns the hospital, we don't necessarily control what's happening in terms of their expansion project. So I want you to continue addressing us, but I think uh, Mr. Silva and I also serve on the hospital board, and I'm gonna ask you to please come to our next hospital meeting because Ms. Uh, Dr. Edward will be there. And so when you tell me that Dr. Edward said this, I want, oh. uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I want Dr. Edward to be there to say 
this is what I said, okay. and this is what I meant. So um, I want you to continue to, to talk with us, but I also want to make sure that you get written down on your calendar the next full meeting of the hospital board, which is going to be on May 22nd at 5.30 p.m. on the hospital campus. And Ms. Kenerson and myself and Mr. Silva will make sure that Dr. Edward is fully briefed, that he knows that you're gonna be there, and uh, make sure that you're on the agenda. Great, um, because I wasn't the only one in that meeting when he told us that he just wasn't gonna do it. Okay, so br please bring I will. whoever I, I, I'll, wants, I'll whoever try to bring like as to many people as I can, because okay. all of us are really upset at what's going okay. on in that area. Okay. And uh, also, I, if I'm about to run out of time, I would like to address the fact that we heard that the hospital wants to rezone the house on the corner, which used to belong to Judge Harmon, I believe. I believe it's 1204 uh, Poplar Drive, right on the corner. They own that house, and they want to have it rezoned commercial, and the whole neighborhood is opposed to that because we don't want them to do that. What okay. they now I like to deal with facts. So right now we're going to ask Ms. Viacanya to come up. Okay. And she's our planning director. And then uh, Ms. Viacanya, maybe if it works with your schedule, you could attend our um, hospital board meeting at the end of the month. Okay. Thank you very so, much. Uh, yes. Thank you. Mr. Salzer. Uh, yes. Currently the hospital has submitted an application for a change of zone for that property that was the mentioned okay. just the one house it's not going to be uh the proposed use is not commercial it would be limited use public use just like the hospital and the other properties okay. uh, belonging to the hospital okay. uh, that's in the process uh, we're also processing right now that's going to go before the city council a site plan review for a temporary parking where the three homes were demolished. Okay. And we were, uh, we were getting ready to bring it to the council. However, we received complaints from the, uh, from the residents in that area. Yes. So what we did is we had a meeting with Dr. Edward and his staff, was it last week? Uh, to try and figure out how, what's going on, what we can do to minimize the impacts. So we're working on solutions. I don't have an answer right now, but. Uh, we have three weeks to work on it. Okay. 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 So I, th I think that this will be a great discussion for us to have at the hospital with the other trustees present, um, the folks with boots on the ground who know what's happening mm -hmm. with the site plan and what's happening on the larger campus expansion um, will all be present and we can have that robust discussion at that time. Ms. Kenerson, can I rely on you to, to get that word to Dr. Edward that we'll move forward with that? The uh, one comment that Mr. Salazar made, um, Ms. Viacanya, that, that did disturb me was with regard to the demolition of the homes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they did pull permits, so, um, I don't know specifically what the problem was, but um, it's something that I know that the building official and also engineering department uh, were looking at, okay. but permits were pulled for the okay. demolition. For the meeting at the hospital at the end of the month, could mm -hmm. you please um, maybe get a little bit more data? Sure. Because I'm, I'm sure that whoever did the demolition was required to address any kind of yes. issues with the home yes. and make sure and the combustibles, whatever, were right, secure right. and all that. But uh -huh. again, for us to have this full discussion, if you could have okay. that information mm -hmm. available. Mr. Silva. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, the only thing that I may want to add also for discussion, uh, Norma, in, in regards to the wall that was mentioned, um, I, I seem to recall that there is a wall that would be required whenever you have a, an intense use abutting a residential zone. So I'm just going to be prepared to address mm -hmm. that okay. at the hospital meeting. Okay. And, and also, if there's been a change, if in fact there was a, a solid wall that had it been planned to be constructed mm -hmm. and now is something else, so right along the lines of what okay. Mr. Silva was saying. Excuse me. Yeah, I'll just real briefly um, kind of echo what Mr. Silva was saying. I, I feel the one, um, I don't want to say the one thing, but the, one of the main things that Mr. Salazar was talking about was the wall. And 
I could see that that would be a, a real issue mm -hmm. if, if Costco would uh, launch that and, and take care of that situation. I guess my other concern would be is temporary parking. I guess that's going to be something that's going to be brought to us. Like yes. That, um, I guess I would also have a concern about having, let's say, a rope chain you know, yeah. separating yeah. Yeah. A, a house from parking that's going to be open to the public. So right. Just from a safety and security perspective for, for residents, I guess mm -hmm. that, that should be acknowledged by the hospital and, and Okay. Yes, that Julia. Plus, um, Kathy, if you could have uh, Dr. Edward be prepared to talk about enhanced security once the new uh, medical office building is open. One of the things I wanted to mention to Mr. Kelly is when that office building is open, some of the departments from each RMC are going to be moving into there, so there'll be spaces available for IVEDC to look for other space. Okay? okay. We good? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So um, with all of that discussion, again, thank you very much. Uh, this is, this is exactly how government's supposed to work. We're supposed to be able to, you come, we talk, and then we move forward with solutions. So very much appreciate your time here today. Okay, so I think we're ready to move forward then with um, action on item number seven. This is the purchase of the uh, Dr. and Mrs. Roach home, and he is going to abstain. So that passes with three yes, one absent, and one abstention. On this next item, Mr. Silva, do you want to declare your conflict, please? Um, yes, I just requested for the item to be pulled so that I can uh, abstain from, from voting on this matter. This is a, a matter with Imperial Valley College, and as you know, uh, that is my primary employer, so I prefer to abstain from voting on the item. <coughs> Um, I did have a couple of questions for um, the city manager that I submitted prior to the meeting. Most of them had to do with parking um, at the point in time that the, um, because I guess there's going to be a dedicated parking area for people who are using the pool. Yes, and I had some questions with regard to, you know, is there going to be good directional signage to get people there? Are they going to be subject to tickets if they park somewhere else or what's, what's going to happen? Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Patricia. Nice to see you, <coughs> Council. I know you brought me here today. Um, we have been discussing the use of Imperial Valley College Pool because uh, we pretty much already outused the central pool, and uh, they have been very gracious at allowing us to use their pool for the last, um, I want to say, ten years. Mm -hmm. um, but because we've been receiving a few uh, grants from LA 84, and then we're part of the American Red Cross Centennial. And we were actually extended another two years. Uh, we found that um, the central pool uh, was a little difficult for us to work in there and uh, provide all the swim lessons that are required as part of the grant. Uh, this year, we were able to talk to Mr. Torres uh, from Imperial Valley College, and we found that um, Imperial Valley College was in dire need of, you know, expanding their programs as well. And last year, our staff was actually helping Imperial Valley College with lifeguards. We trained their water safety instructors uh, because they didn't have that capacity. So this year we have the capacity because we just had someone uh, uh, get the academy uh, certification. So now we're able to provide the uh, trainings over at, um, at IBC. The other thing that we're working out with IBC is also providing a fall campus class, accredited class, so that they can start providing lifeguard and certification classes in water safety instructor. Okay. It, because it's in, we're in dire need. All the cities are, are hurting with lifeguards. And as you know, El Centro has been chosen as one of the cities to provide standard programs. We're <clears throat> keeping um, on top of all the requirements. And so in part of our conversation and your conversation regarding, or your, um, your concern regarding parking, we're working with parking control. Uh, we do have lots, lot E, which is about 200, and uh, it'll serve 200 vehicles. Uh, our staff will also be putting signage along the side, and we're also going to be putting it on the marquee. But that's people coming from the uh, Highway 111 right. um, going um, uh, westbound. So if you're coming from, you know, Aiton Road eastbound, we are going to put signage as to where you turn. And I, staff and I are working on that um, already. 
Um, <clears throat> just to kind of give you a little bit more um, uh, information, we're also working with security. And uh, we've been talking about this for about a year, how we would promote the program out there. So with social media, uh, Facebook, and um, our website, we're going to be letting people know, especially when they register, exactly. we're going to give them a map. Perfect. And we're also going to tell them this is lot E, this is where you park. Okay. For public swim, we're going to be announcing it on our um, on our PA system that if anybody is here for uh, open swim, to please park in lot E. Is there a chance that they might park in lot the other lots? Yes, and they will be ticketed because. But parking uh, control is aware that we're going to be out there this year, what so we're we, going to continue we to work have, with them. <clears throat> what if we're in need of overflow? What if we have like a wildly successful, have more than 200 cars show up? And we probably will. Yep. Um, we are working on getting uh, another part of the parking lot um, scheduled for our program. And again, we're meeting with IBC next week to try to locate more parking in, in close proximity to the gymnasium and to the swimming pool. That'd be awesome. Are we going <coughs> to use both pools this summer? Are we going to use Central and IBC? No. We're just using IBC because we're, we're extending our hours from 8 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock. We're extending our, our public swim. Um, because over at Central Pool, if you know, we don't have lights inside the pool. Right. We don't have lights on the outside perimeter right. or inside perimeter of the pool. And we have to share the pool right. with the swim team. And that's kind of caused an issue with us trying to program all the swim lessons. Right. And in the survey we did last year, we had people uh, wanting more swim lessons in the evening hours. And um, if you remember, when we had the city plunge, our biggest capacity was at night from 6 to 10. Right. We were at 300 every night. So we're hoping that we can also do that. IBC just uh, refurbished their pool about two years ago, and they have brand new lights. Uh, they did the lane lines again, the, the, the <clears throat> swim lines. And so we're looking forward to having a lighted parking area, a lighted pool. And we're probably going to be br bringing back some nice activities like um, night movies, uh, mm -hmm. hot dogs on Saturdays, and, and we'll be able to uh, have a venue out there as well. So we're excited about... Uh, going into unknown waters, kind of, but um, <laughs> no I think we're gonna. <laughs> no pun intended. But I think we'll, we're gonna do well with our social media, and I think people are gonna be um, absolutely happy with the the staff that we're continuing uh, continuing to train, and with IBC we're able to use their pool in May, so we can start our water safety instructor courses and also our lifeguard courses. When will we start <clears throat> registration for the swim programs? Uh, it looks like for our swim program, it'll start May. I want to say 14th, around May 14th. Um, and uh, we're actually opening it up to El Central residents only first. first. And, and then we're going to open up to the general public. Okay. We have about 350 scholarships that we are going to provide for unduplicated Learn to Swim uh, participants. LA84 Foundation, uh, we just got word today that we did get our grant. And they're going to provide 200 scholarships for kids ages 7 to 17. Um, and that's part of the Learn to Swim program. The other one is the Centennial program. We're getting 150 uh, scholarships to, for the Learn to Swim, and that's for all ages because of our high drowning in the Imperial County. Um, we're also having scholarships for the uh, lifeguards, water safety instructors, and junior lifeguards. What about adults <clears throat> who never learned how to swim? Those will be provided, and they have been provided uh, since last year. So I think that's really important. Right. And junior high school kids, uh, uh, you know, we, we don't have a junior high school program. Right. So we're really going to hit up the uh, Wilson uh, Junior High, De Anza Magnet, and Kennedy uh, Junior High. Because <clears throat> that's the age group that we want to get. So LA84, in, in my conversation with them today, they're excited about um, this is the furthest they've gone south uh, on, on programs. And we're excited to work with them to bring an awareness of aquatics. Um, but do folks understand that LA84, this is money that was raised during the 1984 Olympics hosted in the city of Los Angeles. And so they have all of this money that they give out to um, youth programs, primarily, I think, Southern California, right? Primarily Southern California. So mm -hmm. this is, that's really it's great. Lasted since mm -hmm. So it's lasted since 84. <laughs> and so we're hoping that in Los Angeles just got the 2028 20, Olympics. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And or maybe main. they'll have one here. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they That'll can come be, yeah. down this far. That'll be awesome. No question. Okay. Okay. Pat, question. Pat, one question. Yes. When, when you're giving out the, the maps of parking mm -hmm. during registration, what about maybe uh, transit schedules? Because 
Yes. Now that we're mm -hmm. moving this away from the city, mm -hmm. there's going to be some people that maybe don't have transportation. They're going to be relying on our, our, our transit system. So um, it might be a good idea to supply them with that also for the bus schedules. Yes, uh, we are working with the uh, transit centers um, to find out when the buses get to IBC because there are morning classes out at IBC, but I'm not sure how late they run and see if we can work something out where if they want to, we want a group of kids that want to, you know, uh, not just kids, but parents that want to, take the bus out to IBC for the pool, and then maybe they can come back and pick them up. Okay, but so that's excellent mm -hmm. suggestion. So Marcella, could you uh, contact Mark Baza and yes. make sure that this connection know. happens uh, with regard to the transit? That's an I excellent, excellent thing. Okay, mm -hmm. Did you, anything? we're good? Oh, we're good, great program. Uh, okay. Pat, just when I think you've amazed me beyond belief, you amaze me yet again. So you're thank gonna, you we're gonna have a grand <laughs> opening, so all of you, um, okay. you know, come and visit us uh, out at the pool. Uh, we have a, a, our staff is excited, our swim uh, instructors and our lifeguards are so excited because they get a a, a cool facility to rotate into, uh, because they're also giving us a room where they can rotate to relax. And at Central, we didn't have that; we were just clustered in there. So they're excited about you know um, the possibilities that they'll be able to provide out there. You know, that was my, my job in high school and college, right? Lifeguard and, and all your water kids, safety uh, instructor. I don't want to say all that. your kids because I think I, all your kids went through our program too. I think so too. Bigger than the kids to save them? You don't have to be bigger than the kids to save them, Jason. Thanks for that comment. <laughs> <laughs> I just wondered. You know, karma <coughs> has a way of coming around. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think we just <laughs> voted on that. And do we have it? Question, Mr. Silva. Oh, can oh, you do no. abstain on... Okay, awesome. Great job, Pat. Keep us posted. Thank you. Okay, we are done with the consent calendar. We're moving on. Ms. Stacy, item number 10. This is our public hearing. Okay, good evening, Madam Mayor, Honorable Council. This is the city council that missed the Arbor Day presentation <laughs> last week. No, not, not no. the entire one. Did you, I did you make it? Okay. And Kenzie was there too. Aww. Yeah, her first Arbor, her first Arbor Day. <laughs> her first Arbor Day, yes. And thank you for that, Jason. Um, the item you have before you right now is a substantial amendment to the 2017-18 CDB Annual Action Plan. Uh, it, we're requesting a reallocation of funding from the El Centro Aquatic Center uh, for this program year to be reallocated to the McGee Park uh, restroom and snack bar project. Uh, the, currently, the Aquatic Center project this is a snapshot of what the funding and the um, amounts of money we have available for the project. Uh, for the tax increment bond funding, we have a little over $9 million available. The CDBG funding that was previously allocated for this project was strictly for the purchase of equipment. It was not to be used for construction. Uh, there's an estimate of the equipment and furnishing costs of about 750000 and we were going to try and use what we could of the uh, annual allocation for the 17-18 year to be help with the offset the cost of the equipment for the, the uh, purchase of the equipment. Uh, with the problem we were running into again that we had run into previously is the, the HUD requirement of a timely, it's referred to as the timeliness test. On April 30th of every year, the HUD runs a report that shows the funding we have on hand. We are only allowed to have an amount equal to 1.5% of uh, the annual act. It's a 1.5 ratio of the funding that for our current uh, grant amount. They just did our timeliness test yesterday, and we are in compliance, so that was good news. Um, so base, the aquatic center schedule would we are looking at coming to you guys and next council meeting for the bid award, looking at beginning of construction in June of 2018 and completing construction of August in August of 2019. You know how frustrating it is to finish a massive pool project two months yes. before summer ends, We're right? We're gonna push all weekend. No, <laughs> I think the I mean, first original one we had us finishing in October. It was right after summer. I mean, if, if there is anything that we can do to push this forward, guys, go. come on, <laughs> 60 days to get this pool open. Come on. Um, so we, we, we realize that with the importance of rushing the schedule, it is a 300-day uh, construction work construction schedule, which puts us in August. 
Um, the problem we have is that the HUD timeliness test for 2019 falls right in the middle of that construction. And because we are looking at using it to purchase equipment, that it's not gonna happen soon enough. And we need to look at uh, reallocating funding to a project that will get the money spent before this timeliness test. If we don't have the money spent prior to this, we do stand the chance of being sanctioned by HUD and they will, they can and likely will withhold funding for the next program year. Okay. So tell us what you want to do. So the, the recommended um, project allocation was actually brought to you in the 1819 year, the annual action plan, which would be the demolition of the current um, restroom and snack bar facility at the community center in McGee Park and the reconstruction in a, an area that will service all of, uh, better serve the, 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 the new playground and the basketball courts, the splash pad, and it, you'll see in the next slide, it also prepares us if we are uh, fortunate to receive the LWCF grant, uh, the Land Water Conservation Fund, where we are looking at um, in the future, uh, we have the grant application in for phase two of the McGee Park. It'll, if relocating it will not only, it, the, the facility at this time does not meet current ADA standards. So we are not right. in ADA compliance, uh, the current standards. Additionally, it is dilapidated and starting to fall apart. And so mm -hmm. we are looking at Whenever we brought it to you, we let you know that we felt it was necessary to demolish it. And if we're going to do that, reconstruct it in an area that's better accessible to all of the park. And then new, the, not only the current facilities, but the planned future facilities. Okay, so, so help me with this. In most of our other parks where we have um, snack bar facilities, it's because we have private leagues that utilize the snack bar facilities as, as ancillary to their programs, right? So what's the purpose of having um, a snack bar facility at McGee? Who's, who's practicing there? Who plays there? What leagues are there? So, so the proposed project um, will allow us to, you know, um, continue to do our soccer program. And the, um, what we want to do with, with this project is also include the uh, flag football league because we're out of space everywhere. We run a, a flag football league every year, and uh, we have nowhere to go. We've actually used McGee Park. No, we've used uh, Swarthout. We've had to go to Starkfield, and it's hard to use Starkfield because we have Pop Warner out there. Right. So uh, this facility is going to be multi-use for soccer, um, flag football, as well as uh, small little training sites for small s soccer kids. So do you envision the city then operating the snack bar as opposed to? Yes, we've had uh, the snack bar when we do our flag football league. Okay. And when we start doing our small little soccer leagues for the small tiny zero to fives, right. or not zero to five, but three to fives, uh, we do want to provide a snack okay. bar out there. Are there other questions? Not necessarily a question, but I think, um, you know, I'm a little disappointed that we can't use the money for the pool, but I cannot think of a better project to substitute that than, than right. this project that is so uh, desperately needed as well. So I think that's a good idea. If I could show you um, this, yeah. just a, a couple pictures of the current conditions. The uh, recommended project does include uh, redoing some of the sidewalks and benches and uh, the uh, trash cans and so forth around the, build, the new building. Um, to show you the annual allocation that you guys approved for the 2018-19 year was uh, came out to estimate of 336,173. We won't know the actual amount until we get notified by HUD of our annual allocation. The construction estimate for the project, including contingency, is 480. So even with the 18-19 year allocation, we were short on funding. We were going to have to be searching for additional funding to complete it. And with the out of the reallocation of this funding to that pro or this project, it does fully fund the project, and we'll actually probably have some left over, but it will fully fund the project. And what's our timeline? The timeline is um, the, the, you guys approve the substantial amendment tonight. By the time we do the, we'll have to do a 30-day public hearing or a public notice here in El Centro. Then it um, goes to HUD, and they have an additional 30 days. We are looking at going through a design procurement. Um, our housing inspector has done some preliminary plans, but he does want to uh, use the task or the on-call contracts to have right. uh, the actual plans yes. prepared. 
and we're looking at a bidding period in September and looking and beginning construction in November, okay. completing in February, which puts us well ahead of the April uh, 30th ti uh, timeliness test. Even if something were to happen that it was delayed some, we'd be substantially into construction and a majority of the funding would have been okay. spent already. So it helps us in achieving the timeliness test. Are we in, in contact with members of the McGee family? Or can we track them down? I bet we can. Okay, um, I think I might contact Ms. Sanders and see because if there are members of the McGee family that would like to come down for, you know, like a ribbon cutting or something, that would be pretty cool to have them there. Okay, so I'll contact Sedalia. Okay, all right, this looks good. This is a public hearing, so at this point in time, I'm going to open the public hearing. Is there anyone that wants to speak on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, return to council. Comments, questions? None. None. Staff would then request that council approve this substantial amendment and authorize the city manager to submit a letter to HUD um, for the substantial amendment of the They wouldn't bill. say no, right? Just oh, we've never had them say no yet as long as Perfect. council's on board. <laughs> it's, our, it's a community decision. It's, yeah. Perfect. Okay, we have a motion by Jackson, second by Garcia. And that item passes four with one absent. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Cox, nice to see you. Okay, we are moving on then to item number 11. Although, you know what, I, I apologize. I think I would like to, with every, if everybody's okay, we're gonna move up item number 12. Sorry, um, Ms. Salcedo, we're gonna bump you back. So we're gonna take item number 12. This is new business. This is a public hearing to consider a recommendation of the Planning Commission on a sign ordinance text amendment. Ms. Viacanya. <clears throat> Mr. Coyne, I didn't think you wanted to sit through our budget discussion, but if you want to, I can put you back where you were. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the Council. The item before you is a request submitted by Mr. Coyne uh, to amend our sign ordinance uh, pertaining to freeway oriented signs. Now, if this item is approved, it would apply citywide. So the applicant is requesting an amendment to address the visual obstruction to drivers traveling on Interstate 8. As you are aware, there's uh, Interstate 8 is higher elevation than some of the properties along the interstate. So uh, in reviewing the project, uh, what we felt would work best is to establish a category under freeway oriented signs. And this would only be applicable to uh, general commercial properties and tourist commercial properties that are uh, 800 feet, no more than 800 feet from the freeway, from Interstate 8. So by doing this, it would allow higher signs due to elevation differences uh, between Interstate 8 and the surrounding properties. And it would also allow, allow a larger sign area. Basically, what we're proposing is under the CT and CG zones, uh, these freeway-oriented signs would be allowed. The maximum area, again, would be uh, four square feet for each foot of linear front frontage up to 800 square feet. And the maximum height would be 50 feet as measured from the top of the sign to the horizontal distance to the nearest Interstate 8 travel lane. So if you can imagine the interstate being at a higher level, so the sign would be 50 feet it can, from the interstate. So there's different elevations, so it's, uh, for example, Mr. Coins, I think there's a difference of 21 feet. So he would be allowed to have a pole that's 71 feet uh, 50 plus the 21. So that's 
the intent. Now, these are the areas where this particular amendment would apply, again, uh, along the Interstate 8, and it would be all CT and CG zones. And this is uh, how we will calculate the sign height. And again, it's gonna be calculated based on the nearest travel lane of Interstate 8, okay? So who's, res who's responsible, Ms. Viacanya, for making sure that that height is agreed upon, that, that they're measuring from the nearest travel lane, that it's an additional, like you said, 21 feet. Who's responsible for the making sure? The sign company. Okay. So when they submit uh, building permit uh, plans, we're gonna verify that. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. Uh, these are just uh, elevations that were submitted with the application. In this case, it would be uh, uh, Coin Power Sports along with the other uh, possible tenants within that site. One other change that we're making also is that currently we allow one pole sign per parcel. And if you can imagine, Mr. Coin has four parcels. So we would rather have one pole sign than having four pole signs. Right. So we're making that change also with this amendment. And these are just uh, views from the westbound interstate, as you can see how the, uh, the proposed signage, pole sign, uh, this is a view from Interstate 8 going west, and this is going east. Norma, do you get a sense, do you get a sense just looking at the rendering that this sign will be higher than the Home Depot sign right right next to it? Um, no, it would be higher than the Home Depot sign. Uh, I think it it would be, I don't think it's, no, it, from what we calculate, it won't be higher. Some of those signs, and I don't know how, but they're, they're higher than what's allowed. Allowed, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember like the IHOP sign. The in and out and, you know. Well, I remember the in and out because I was on the planning commission when we mm -hmm. did that. And we, we did a variance on the in and out because mm -hmm. there was a pre-existing pole there from the old yeah, gas station. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that ended up being about 10 or 15 feet higher than the, than the city ordinance. Yeah, it was, it's actually like almost 80 feet tall. Yeah, yeah it, it was, I remember it was taller. But it was the only one that we allowed. And I, what, what's the, the height now? Right now it's 50. Oh, I guess maybe it was 30 feet taller. I don't know. Yeah. I do remember when that came up, though. I don't think we have a, a, a one. Or you can see it from Acatillo. No <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Did you? The city of, or the township of Acatillo? We were just Pretty really much. excited that there was an in and out coming. I know. So. I know. We were so excited. We wanted everybody to see it. Okay. And, and again, uh, another change is just proposing that uh, to allow uh, one pole per commercial center rather than per parcel. So the Planning Commission considered the project and they are recommending approval. Notices went out to, and the notice was also published in the Ivy Press. So at this time, we're asking that the public hearing be opened uh, and if no further questions uh, to approve the proposed amendment to the sign ordinance. Ms. Biacanya, is this how it's it's handled in other jurisdictions when you have the elevated freeway? Yes. Okay. We will. Very good. All right. This is a public hearing. If there's anyone that would like to step forward to talk about this, except for Mr. Coyne. I'm just kidding. I wonder what his Hello. stance is going to be on this. Yeah. Are you in favor of this proposal? Uh, I'm a proponent. Yes. Yeah, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm just here to answer any questions for you. Uh, it is similar to Home Depot. One of the reasons we asked, of course, and as you know, we're already under construction on Starbucks and uh, Habit Burger, and we're hoping to have a, a fourth tenant here real quick. Uh, I think the idea of one, obviously, being able to be seen from the freeway, and that was a comment that came from Starbucks right away with the center shrubs and the freeway. Uh, they were concerned that uh, what would be westbound traffic wouldn't be able to see their sign. Really, really important to them. Uh, almost to the point where they actually had asked, uh, we... we they cannot open Starbucks uh, until the sign is up, so time is of the essence. Uh, I guess when you get that powerful and big, you can make those kind of demands. Um, but uh, 
we're in play, we're in action. Uh, they're scheduled for July 1st uh, opening. Star, uh, not Starbucks, Habit Burgers should be breaking ground here in the next 30 days. I believe they're in plan right now and things are moving around uh, well. To update you on Coin Power Sports, uh, I just turned into the city manager, Marcella, just the other day, uh, our employment update. I believe 15, 19 new employees and, and still growing. So we're very pleased with that and, and uh, our business has definitely grown uh, not only locally now, but regionally. So we're getting more business from Yuma, San Diego, and we're becoming more of a destination location. Um, so it's worked well. Hopefully you guys feel the same way, and we appreciate uh, staff has worked very well with us. So as uh, city manager, and, and we appreciate the support we've had from the council. The other footnote to that, Mr. Coyne, is that your former location is now a big, beautiful medical office. How about building. that? I mean, it's just... Uh, really worked out well. It uh, has gone very, very well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, while we're up on the topic, I haven't seen you guys in quite a while. Uh, as you know, we, we purchased the bowling alley, turned it around, and it seems to be doing well. And every time we go in there, it seems to be full and lots of families and seniors and kids are having a good time. And as you know, that I was kind of lead on that. So uh, it's been a good run. Awesome. We're going to have to name something after you. Oh, I don't think so. so but, but, uh, All right. <laughs> any other questions, comments? Okay. Just briefly, Mr. Yep. Coyne, I, I just had my son's ninth birthday at that bowling alley, so did thank you, you very no. much for all the work yeah. that you did to make sure that that stayed uh, in our community. Yeah, it's really an awesome thing. My son was playing in a, a Masters tournament on, on this weekend, and, and to see it, uh, you know, just just vibrant and, and happening in a, in a destination for ages, you know, people of all ages of our local community, um, definitely, uh, how do you call it, uh, self-serving. Yeah. You know, it just feels good. That Any hints on what's going to fill the fourth slot on that poll? Um, you know, uh, we're working very closely, and maybe not everybody's favorite, Chipotle. We're <laughs> going back and forth. I have to say that. <laughs> um, oh, because we had a discussion about <laughs> that. Yeah, but, but um, you know, Mike, somehow or another, Chipotle won't go in by themselves. Uh, they always like somebody to come along, and some of their favorites are firehouse subs or jersey mics or something of that sort um, we would still love and we still have enough space in our last parcel uh, to bring a chick-fil-a in uh, that's our goal uh, our original goal was a chick-fil-a and a starbucks we got the starbucks we're working hard and we haven't given up and with a little bit of luck um, we'd love to bring one of those down to the valley as well that's wonderful okay. I, I do hear that the uh, those the habit burgers are pretty good <laughs> but they're not afraid to go heads up, and we've eaten there. I don't know if you guys have been to San Diego. We've eaten in one of their locations, and, and, and they do have a good burger and a uh, more diverse menu. Um, so, yeah, it's... Toe-to-toe -to -toe with In-N-Out right across the street. Yeah. That's and, pretty you know, gutsy. We when we did this project, and you guys supported it, and again, we appreciate it, you know, we talked about employment growth and reinvesting back in the community, but we think between Starbucks and Habit, um, you know, the, the, the jobs that's going to come to that center and that piece of property compared to where it was a couple of years ago, uh, we're pretty excited about it. We think it'd be well over 100 when it's all said and done. So. Awesome. Well, I went to college in Santa Barbara, and that's where the habit started. Oh, no um, kidding. So uh, if you guys haven't had one of those before, you're in for a treat. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, Are you buying? The, not yeah. only the locals, of but course. we're looking at out of town. Now they're all going to stop and get their coffee, and we're hoping we'll be a destination. So instead of sitting in Starbucks and drinking their coffee, they'll mosey over to Coin Power Sports. We're, we're an impulse. We sell toys, so we're hoping <laughs> we, we can send them home with more than a cup of coffee when it's all <laughs> There we go. Very good. Thank okay. You. Any you. comments? Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing then. then what's the uh, pleasure of the council? I guess we pass that 4-0. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay. We're uh, backing up to item number 11, which will be our final agenda item of the evening. Okay. Hey, good evening, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Welcome to our second budget workshop for fiscal year 2019. Um, today's workshop will be covering the enterprise funds, that's water, wastewater, uh, special revenue funds, and construction project funds. 
for the enterprise funds, uh, uh, those are the funds used to operate, used to account for operations that are financed and operated in a manner that is similar to a private business enterprise. You provide a service and you charge a fee for it. Uh, the enterprise funds that we have are the water and wastewater fund. For the water fund, um, we are projecting revenues from water sales and other revenues of $8.9 million for fiscal year 2019. For fiscal year 2018, we're projecting approximately $8.8 .8 million, so a change of 100,000 approximately uh, for next fiscal year. Uh, for the rate increases, the last rate increases was, rate increase was in July of 2016. Uh, with the current revenues, we are able to, uh, we have a coverage ratio of 1.41. The requirement per the bond agreements is 115, so we're at a good level um, uh, for next fiscal year and this year. So no need for a rate increase. Uh, with regards to the coverage, coverage ratio, we're okay at the moment. Yeah, right but now. if we're uh, projecting any capital increases in the future, any expansions, any any anything like that, then yeah. yes, we do need a rate Nobody increase doesn't. to be able to accommodate those new um, Very good. Uh, projects. With regards to uh, 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 working capital, uh, we are projecting a beginning working capital of about $12.3 million. And then we're adding $3.2 million, that's after operating revenues and operating expenses, um, for a total of $15.5 million. Um, out of that, uh, we have non-operating expenditures that we need to cover, and those are, uh, for example, the debt service at $2.2 million, that's for um, the water uh, bonds, the 2014, and then we have CIEDB, another uh, two older loans. We have, uh, we are project, we are allocating $1.3 million for capital expenditures, and we'll go over the detail in a, a later slide. Uh, so total non-operating uh, expenditures total $3.6 million. That leaves us with an ending working capital, projected ending working capital as of 6.30 of 19 of $11.8 million. The $11 million, $11.8 million is sufficient to allocate for the various potential liabilities per the city's financial policy. Uh, the first one, we have an allocation for a contingency, 562,000, which is 10% of operating expenditures. We have also allocated uh, 212,000 for the accrued leave liability, and that's uh, equal to the actual liability. We have also allocated $4.1 million, which is equal to the accumulated depreciation on machinery, vehicles, shop, build equipment, and so on. So we have enough, uh, therefore we have enough um, working <coughs> capital to be able to accommodate the various allocations and leaving an undesignated unreserved of $6.9 million after the allocations. Um, with regards to wastewater, uh, same situation, we are allocating, we are budgeting, uh, projecting $9.9 .9 million in revenues from the, uh, in the wastewater fund. Uh, this year it's uh, more in the $9.8 million for an increase of $100,000. Uh, the, again, the, the same thing, the last rate increase was in July of 2016 and the coverage ratio uh, for our bonds is 1.89 and again the requirement is 1.15. We're uh, in compliance there. Uh, some of the major uh, items within the wastewater fund are the continuing upgrades to the wastewater system from the, uh, to be paid with bond proceeds, proceeds and working capital. The total amount being allocated in the wastewater fund for capital is $9.3 million. Um, working capital for a wastewater, same situation. We start with $7.6 million. After our revenues and expenditures of 9.8 and 5.4 million dollars, we have uh, a net difference uh, increase of 4.4, giving us a 12 million dollars uh, in working capital. Um, I'm sorry, in revenues. Um, then we have non-operating revenues and expenditures of five million dollars in bond proceeds uh, income and then other income, $1.6 million, and that's basically a grant um, that we have. We have to pay debt service, $2.3 million. Uh, we have the 2012 and 2014 bonds, and then we have allocated $9.3 million for capital expenditures in the, in the fund. 
Uh, total non-operating revenues and expenditures of $5 million are being uh, reduced from our uh, $12 million, giving us an ending working capital of $7 million um, at the end of fiscal year 2019. So, Ms. Salcedo, the 1.6, was that the Schneider Electric? That's the grant, yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. With regards to working capital uh, reserves and designations, again, per the city's policy, we are we have sufficient uh, reserves to be able to allocate a 10% reserve for contingency, um, 548,000, 276,000 for accrued leave liability, and $1.6 million for, which is equal to the accumulated depreciation on the uh, vehicles and major equipment. Um, the undesignated, unreserved uh, fund balance, working capital at the end of the year is estimated at $4.5 million for the wastewater fund. With regards to capital, uh, again, capital request being evaluated uh, based on uh, safety, whether it, it is uh, the need is to, for us to address a safety issue, a legal requirement, or um, to improve customer service. Based on that, um, the recommended capital for the water fund um, is as follows. We have under the water system maintenance, an allocation of six, $365,000 for vehicles. Uh, that's a water truck, loader, and a truck, and then some field and safety equipment. For the water treatment uh, plant, $1 million. For uh, water meters, uh, $750,000. Uh, repairs to the water ponds, 100,000, and then uh, there is a small capital purchase, 30,000 flow meters, existing pump, 8,000, new mixer, 50,000, and 22,000 for anthracite replacement, and then 40,000 for um, relocation of controls for the valves on the uh, filter gallery. Somebody here tell me what anthra anthracite replacement is. Cool. Anthracite is coal. It's it's clean energy system. The filters, maybe. Filters, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ask an expert. Acted like I knew what I was talking about. Okay. <laughs> um, and then for water administration, uh, twenty three thousand for software and, and servers. Uh, for a total uh, allocation in the water fund uh, for capital of one point three, almost one point four million dollars. In the wastewater fund, we have allocated $9.3 million, and it is, it's allocated as follows. Wastewater system maintenance, $160,000 for trucks uh, and equipment. Uh, in the wastewater treatment plan, $4.1 million um, uh, for the, it, well, it's the main entrance perimeter fence, $2 million, but then we have an additional $1 million out of the bonds for a total of $3 million just for that one project, main entrance and perimeter fence. Then under the treatment plant, we have uh, allocations of 220,000 for the clarifiers, 85,000 to rehabilitate uh, a water pump, um, and then 170,000 for the uh, clarifiers, 1.6 million for blowers. Uh, under the bonds, we have uh, the final $5 million out of, these, uh, out of this bond issue and uh, that's being allocated uh, for the main entrance, one million, bar screen, two million, and two million for the sewer lining projects. And then a small portion, 43,000 for software and servers for a total in the wastewater fund of $9.3 uh, million. Under uh, motor vehicle, recommended capital, uh, we have uh, 64,000 for a scanner, a truck, two trucks, and then a vehicle battery starter. Under the enterprise funds, uh, we have only one, we have one uh, request, staffing request, and that's uh, from an, that's an engineering, uh, to reclassify an engineering tech one position to an engineering tech two position. The, this position is being allocated three ways, uh, general fund, water, and wastewater. And so the impact is as follows. Uh, the, the net impact of everything is 5,300. It, it's, it's minimal. 2,600 in the general fund, 1,300 water, and then uh, 1,200 in the wastewater fund. 
that's my presentation for the enterprise. We have the special revenue funds. Uh, those are revenues that are restricted to a specific project or activity, such as ga the gas tax fund, the LTA, impact fees, and um, housing grants. We budgeted, um, this budget includes $25.2 million um, in expenditures, and it's as follows. Um, the uh, beginning fund balance is $35 million. We have operating revenues of 12.4, expenditures of $1.7 million for a net uh, difference of 10.6. We add that to the beginning fund balance and we end up with $46 million in, in this uh, special revenues. Out of that, we have allocated $19.8 million for capital. And we'll go over the detail in a later slide. We're paying debt service of $1.3 million for the LTA bonds. We transfer out $1.4 million, and then we have $880,000 for loans, uh, rental rehab, HUD, um, and so on. Um, we are spending in total $23.4 million, and we're ending, uh, project, we're projecting an ending fund balance of $23 million by the end of fiscal year 2019. And again, fund balance in this case is a good, uh, declining is a good thing because that means that we're using those one-time revenues for, and we're completing all these projects. Uh, same situation with construction project funds, but this is, the, for example, the federal highway funds for streets um, and the successor agency. These are uh, used to account for the acquisition and construction of major capital facilities out of these special revenue funds. Uh, we have uh, allocated $4.4 million for, for, um, for, uh, out of these funds. And um, we're starting with 3.8 million in fund balance and ending with 2.5. We're spending approximately, we're allocating approximately $4.3 million of which 3.3 is for capital expenditures and then $1 million for uh, loans out of the 07 bonds, uh, redevelopment bonds um, for uh, uh, housing uh, loans. Again, for capital, out of these two, uh, special revenue funds and construction project funds, we are allocating in total $23.2 million. And we have reviewed the request based on, on those, um, uh, on that criteria, safety, legal requirement, and improved customer service. Question. Out of these uh, $23.9, $23.2 million, we have allocated $8.9 million for street improvements, of which the two major uh, projects here are, are uh, 3.7 million for LaBrucherie and then LaBrucherie widening and then the Imperial Avenue extension. 3.7 million and 3.5 million. We also have 1.5 million for miscellaneous street improvements and then the rest of it 100,000, 50, and 75 for Colonia, shovel ready projects and striping, uh, st street striping maintenance. We have allocated $1.4 million for lighting, sidewalk, and pedestrian improvements. Uh, major ones being the uh, uh, the wayfinding signs, the Cheryl's 247,000, 350,000 for signal lights at um, SR 86, and 450,000 for pedestrian improvements at railroad crossing on Main um, Street, east of 4th Street, and then the Ivy Mall traffic signals. For parks and recreation, we have $11.5 million, with the majority of that being the Aquatic Center, uh, $10 million and uh, then the rest of it being $1.5 million for just various parks, Plank Park, McGee Park, Field Lighting, and then Design and Engineering and Environmental for Buckland and various other parks, Carlos Aguilar, and so on. Other uh, capital, $1.4 million, we have uh, 500,000 for city parking lots, uh, downtown resurface and restriping. We are allocating for the parking lot resurface, 119,000. The library parking lot resurface, 300,000. City buildings re-roofing, 430,000. And again, some of this, these funds are uh, uh, part of the Measure P yes. because they're special right. revenue. And, um, Patricia, well, yes. Yeah, one question. Uh -huh. On the library parking res uh, resurface, is that just the um, section right in front of the existing library? We're not talking about the entire does that section? It. Okay. Yes. Right? Yes. That's yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and any other questions? No? This is the easy fund. There's money. I was going to say, yeah, this is yes. that. Uh, <laughs> so much easier. Uh, um, yeah. 
discussion than the, the last one we had. Oh, of course, yes. The general fund is a challenging yeah. one. So, um, great presentation as always. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Romero, for being here. Um, do we have questions? Yeah. Great okay, job. so so the big unknown that I think is facing facing us, uh, one of the big unknowns, because there's two, um, CalPERS is, is out of control, but the other thing that we really have to worry about, um, the repeal of SB1 has now qualified for, um, we think it's well on its way to qualifying for the ballot in November. And so we have to come up with plan B, because if, if that money were to be repealed and we, we lose the gas tax increase that we recently um, recently started receiving, we need to figure out what we're gonna do with regard to all of our maintenance projects and where that money's gonna come from. So um, Abraham, you and everybody else in your department probably need to come up with a presentation, maybe June, July timeframe. Um, I think what we need to do is in the interest of transparency again, let's share with our community what we have, what we stand to gain, what we stand to lose with regard to SB1 and um, what projects we hope to, to use that funding for. Something in the June timeframe, okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. And also if we can include what, what that revenue source has been at this point to date what we, and what we anticipate for next fiscal year. Those are big dollars, lots of good jobs, okay. Anything else? Okay, well, then we are moving right along here. We have an informational item. Thank you, Ms. Salcido, for my informational item, no successor agency stuff. We did have a public comment. Um, Mr. Velasco, Antonio Velasco, representing the Treasury Department, but he's not here. Maybe he'll be back at a different time. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, I um, just want to say that I look forward to uh, next Friday at the uh, uh, Dancing with the Stars event and uh, our representative, uh, Mr. Garcia, and see what, what he'll be able to do. Yahoo! Uh, look forward to that. Um, also, I, I want to give you an update on our uh, Binational Public Safety Summit. I think staff, Marcella and Liz and, and staff, has done a, just an incredible job in putting this together. I, I think the agenda uh, for that day is, is really strong. Yes, I um, agree. I understand that we already have over 40 um, confirmations from across all four states. So we're gonna have a, a very strong representation of uh, Baja, Sonora, Arizona, and, and us here. Um, and I think it's gonna be a, a memorable event. So I hope that you guys are able to join us that day as well. Thank you. My calendar, I died on my phone, so I don't know exactly where I've been. You've, I've been, you've everywhere. been everywhere. Yeah. Let me just say that. You've um, been everywhere, Mr. Ribbon Cuttings Galore. I, I did have the wonderful opportunity today to be with my colleagues, uh, minus Mr. Silva, of course. Uh, he was working, but we did have the ribbon cutting for the new Smart and Final Extra. So the grand opening uh, for the public is tomorrow. I encourage everyone to go. It is um, very impressive, uh, to say the least. But uh, it's, a, it's a very wonderful addition to the city, and I look forward to uh, seeing people shop there. I think it, the people in El Centro are gonna love it. I think our constituents are gonna love it. It's a wonderful addition. Thank you. Yeah, real quickly, um, I think we had the opportunity to celebrate two of our women in our presence. We had our uh, Sure Helpline, where we honored uh, our mayor, and then the same day, we had the uh, assembly members Woman of the Year where we had our, our city manager. So I thought that was a, a really good day. And I think all of us were pretty much uh, in attendance to one or the other or both. Um, attended um, also today the Smart Final Opening. I think we were all, all of us were there. You, missed, you have to go tomorrow. Um, <laughs> uh, Arbor Day, I did go. Um, Mr. Cardenas also was uh, in attendance. And uh, we planted some trees along um, uh, Ross. So some of our um, current allotment that we still had in inventory that we're playing. We've got another 600, 
fifteen hundred, and then yeah, a total of fifteen hundred more. Um, and um, Community Services Commission and LAFCO. So uh, busy the last couple of weeks, but um, and we welcome our our chief to our Community Services uh, um, Task Force. Task Force, and so uh, got a little flavor of, of how that works. But uh, uh, Chief, you'll you'll see that 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 committee really moves a lot of our agenda. So we get a lot a lot of work done there. So. Fasten your seatbelt when yeah. you're at that one. We move fast in that one. Yeah. That's all I got. So uh, since the last council meeting, I was in Sacramento for two days. One day with the uh, League of California Cities Legislative Ad Advocacy Day, followed the next day by the League of California Cities Board Meeting. Uh, the next evening was a SURE Helpline Dinner, and I do appreciate having my colleagues there in attendance for that. And congratulations, Ms. Piedra, on your recognition from Eduardo Garcia's office. Uh, with regard to the El Centro Regional Medical Center, um, at that meeting, I've asked Dr. Edwards to put together a protocol for when we have a concern with a patient that's there. Um, I think that our tendency, I know my tendency, is to pick up the phone and call Dr. Edward and you know expect him to be in room 221 and tell me what's going on. But with regard to HIPAA regulations and different things, he's probably not the go-to person. So I've asked him to develop a protocol that will go to the um, hospital board first and then come to us. Uh, so we will know where to direct our calls and then he to call us back if we have folks. I know that this, we're so glad that you're back, Ms. Viacanya. We were all very worried about you and we know that Mr. or Dr. Edward received lots of calls and so. We're glad you're back. Um, so then we did have the uh, Community Enhancement Task Force meeting. The minutes will be coming back to you um, very soon. We also had a staff meeting with regard to Beverly Lane and issues that they're having there with regard to their IID raw water availability. So it was great. We had IID in the room. We had um, LAFCO in the room, our staff, and I think that we came to came away with some ideas on how we're gonna handle that on a going forward basis, not only on Beverly Lane, but also similar situations throughout the city. That night we also had the ICTC meeting um, at six o'clock. ICTC is, is requesting that the City of El Centro work with the Heber community uh, for during the summer months, being able to provide curb to curb service for seniors within Heber to get to their senior nutrition lunch site. So I guess that uh, is a request that's been put to us and we'll see what we can come up with. The, pro the difficulty is that it would require one of our um, vans to go to Heber and not be available for our own needs. So we're, we're looking at data to try to figure out maybe we can just provide for a couple of lift operators or something. So then on the 27th, had the opportunity to have the Walmart uh, ribbon cutting, and then that evening was the Elks um, Public Safety Appreciation Event. And I really appreciate uh, Chief Johnson with less than 24 hours notice becoming the keynote speaker at that event. It was, <laughs> so I thought that was really great that you had an opportunity to meet a lot of the law enforcement community and you just did a stellar job, so thank you for that. Uh, the next day was the Dogwood AMPM, AMPM noon ribbon cutting. Uh, they had a fundraiser also for CASA, so that was pretty cool. And then uh, today, of course, we have the Smart and Final ribbon cutting. I'll be headed to um, SCAG tomorrow to attend the uh, General Assembly. Tomorrow is the Future Communication, or excuse me, Future Communities Forum, the Power of Shared Data. So I will be that that on Tuesday, excuse me, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday night is the Fallen Memorial Ceremony. Folks gonna be yeah, able be to there. attend that? Yeah, and I'll then myself, Marcella, uh, who else? And who else? Abraham. Abraham will be in San Diego on Friday afternoon to attend the awards luncheon, ASCE, American Society of Engineers. Of engineers. Californian engineers, maybe. Okay. Civil engineers. Excellent. For our um, 8th Street project. So we'll Madam be Mayor, I, I don't think that you're doing enough. I think you need to find more things to do. <laughs> yeah. 
So with that, um, I am going to wish everybody a very good evening. Is there anything else to come before this council? If not, then we are adjourned. Thank you all very much.